جان سے پہلے ہم بات کر رہے تھے سیکیورٹی کے حالات کی لیکن سیکیورٹی کے حالات کو اگر صحیح کرنا ہے تو معاشی حالات کو بہتری کی طرف لے کر جانا ہوگا اور بالخصوص بلوچستان کے حوالے سے یہ بات بالکل صادر آتی ہے اور ایک جس چیز کی طرف نظر جاتی ہے بلوچستان میں اگر معاشی طور پر خوشحالی پھیلانی ہے تو وہ مائننگ کا سیکٹر ہے اور اس مائننگ کے سیکٹر کے اندر ریکوڈک والا جو پروجیکٹ ہے وہ دو ہزار اٹھائیس کے اندر پہلی پروڈکشن شروع کر دے گا اس سے پہلے بہت سارے کام ایسے ہو رہے ہیں جو کہ ہمیں نظر نہیں آتے اور اوبیسلی سوال بہت سارے یہ بھی پیدا ہوتے ہیں کہ اس سے پہلے ریکوڈک کے اندر کیا ہوا تھا اب گربڑ نہ ہو جائے عدلیہ کی انوالومنٹ تھی یا وٹیور لیکن معاملہ گربڑ ہوا تھا ویل دس سٹے آن ٹریک اور کس طریقے سے بلوچستان میں عوام کی مدد کر سکے گی اور اوور آل پاکستان کی مدد کر سکے گی I really wanted to know that تو اس لیے میں مارک بسٹرو کے پاس گئی جو کہ سی ایو ہے بیرک گولڈ کے ذرا سنے ہم نے کیا بات کی مارک it's a pleasure having you in the program today we are going to talk about a very important topic because obviously بلوچستان is something that is very important to every person in Pakistan it's very close to our heart as well and we are quite concerned about what is going on there and we want the economic development of that province as well so dearly and so uh, much that at this point in time our hopes are pinned with the Rekodik uh, project. 2028 is a cutoff date when the first production will start as we know. Is it on track or are we looking at delays or could it be done earlier? So it's great to speak to you again Anika, thank Pleasure. you for your time. Um, absolutely, it's on track. Uh, the team is working really well. Uh, we've got, uh, it's, it, it, we appreciate the interest in this project and, and it's a pioneering project. We're, we're opening up a new frontier on mining. Mm. We're, we're delivering something that uh, should have been delivered in Baluchistan a long time ago and, mm. and it's a privilege to be part of it. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, the biggest concern for any person who lives in Balochistan or in Pakistan is how is this going to create a sustainable development in the province? Because we've seen a lot of people or investments coming in and then they either back out or something happens. How is this going to give Balochistan sustainable growth, the hope to the youth of Balochistan and at the same time employment opportunities? So. It's an enormous project. Uh, ultimately, it's around $10 billion that are going to be invested in that part of Balochistan. But let me explain it differently. We're going we're gonna to build a mine that will last, on what we know today, at least 45 years. What we believe the potential is past 100 years. Interesting. So this is a big engine. It's going to process, to try and uh, put it in perspective, it's going to process about 45 million tons of copper and gold bearing material hmm. every year. Hmm. And that's the phase one. Phase two, it'll be 90 million tons. And then to get those 90 million tons, you've got to mine another 50% of waste material Absolutely. to actually build this big open pit. And so to the question around people, I'll try and explain to you what we've done already. So today, as I shared with you, I think last time we spoke, is the, the focus is making sure we get the designs and the best advisors and engineers in the world to help us design this project so that when we put it all together mm. um, we'll be able to make it work and therefore get our first production in 2028. At the same time when we switch it on we've got to have people to operate it and we want those people to be first of all all Pakistanis or as much as we can and every bit Baluchistan that we can find wanting to work on the mine. Mm. And so, but you can't do that without investing in it. So we, our strategy is to start in, so when we go into a, a place like Balochistan, it's about three primary issues, potable water, primary education, 
and basic health uh, mm. provisions. Mm. And we've already rolled those out. Right. And, and I'm sorry I'm getting you yeah. short, but there's also a fourth perspective to it. You said you want to hire locals. You want to give employment opportunities to locals, basically, and that's how Balochistan is going to thrive because of this. For that, you need to train the people. And as far as I know, uh, with SIFC, Hunar Foundation, and uh, Barak Gold, there's a training institute in Chahe that has been uh, formed. How is that going to impact the youth over there, their potential? to actually be of use to this project and this project to be of use to the youth over there? So I was getting there. So first of all, we've got to start training, uh, educating the young people because that's the future. This is a multi-generation investment. So mm. multiple generations of people will work on, on, on this mine. And so we've started at junior school. So we want to have all the children under 10 years old within the Rikadek region to be at school, hmm. all those children under 10 years old to be at school by the end of this year. We are already way down the road on that. At the same time, we need to start developing the management structure to be able to lead this big organization. So we went out and we interviewed some, we got th over 3,000 applicants from all the universities in Pakistan and we selected nine people, Baluch citizens, four girls and five boys. And they are now working on our mines in Argentina. And they will go through a program of development and gaining experience from all our different operations around the world. And we're busy with another cadre of uh, 20 and we're already getting the, in, uh, the applications and so we will have by the end of this year 30 odd students as, or graduates, these are graduates, engineers, geologists, accountants, so on, uh, as part of this program. So there's the bottom end and the top end. Very interesting. Now we've got to get, the, we start, we've started employing and by January, February next year we'll have to had, had employed 1,200 people. Right. And we've got this um, technical training program mm. in Nokkundi, right. in partnership with the Hunur Foundation. Mm. And that is originally just designed to give everyone the skill to be able to get a w job I'll, in I'll, the I'll mine. I'll just pick one of your words. You said everyone, right? And you already mentioned men and women. So there is an image in Pakistan that, you know, generally women are put aside. I, being a woman over here, am very concerned. How is this women engagement over there going to be sustainable as well, considering the culture over there? At the same time, the environment. We've seen a lot of places change in Pakistan. We have places where women are actually truck drivers and heavy vehicle drivers. How are you working on that? That the change that you're creating in that society is sustainable with regards to women? So we have CDCs, community development committees that are represented by a broad spectrum of the community around Rikadek. Mm. Uh, you know, nationalist parties, the main political parties, traditional leaders mm. and appointed uh, authorities. Mm. And, and our schools today, all three of them that we've now got functioning and we've got more, more and more coming, um, are about 50-50, uh, male-female. Right. And, uh, and we've just taken on the first um, group of um, what we call vocational students. That's, so the first jobs that we're going to have in Rikadek are the pipelines and the, the, the construction relating to water, to, to pump the water and bring it into the mine. And, and so we're training people around fitting and turning and, you know, pipe manufacturing and foundations. And we're also building the camp to house those uh, immigrant workers coming into to Rikadek. Hmm. And so we are training plumbing, brick laying, uh, concrete uh, laying, and all those early construction skills in our 
um, Technicon and Nakundi. And the objective here is to give every Baluch per person who wants to work an opportunity. And we need to give them the skill, otherwise their job will be taken by somebody outside that area. So, so the idea is to give people the skill to, and, and they will get the preferred jobs. Right. To, to your point, these are very early stage, very manual jobs. Yeah. And, and we've got about 34% of those first 120 odd students that we've now um, signed up are women. Right. So even at that level, on a menial basis, we've got a large percentage of women, surprisingly that large is, That is brilliant. That is, that is actually very encouraging. Entrepreneurship is of utmost importance. You're talking about jobs. How is your training program going to help with entrepreneurial skills? Because it's not only important for the youngsters to just have that job-oriented mindset. They should be able to have their own business and be the uh, employers. Sure. And so that's an equal part of it. As we, as we grow, the, first of all, it's construction. Secondly, it's infrastructure. So, and then it's procurement. Mm -hmm. And so what we've, what we've been doing the last three days here is with the, the core team that's leading this project is mapping out how we get from here to our destination in 2028. Right. And part of that is um, onboarding entrepreneurs. Hmm. Because again, what we're looking for is the real entrepreneur or the one that has the ab ability to be it. Not necessarily the person who's got connections. As you know, in Pakistan and many emerging market economies, there's a lot of authority given to people because of who you know, not what you know. We're after the people who really have ability. And so we have what we call an incubation program and an um, uh, acceleration program hmm. to take, as we build this mine and as we expose ourselves to the community, we will pick up people that are talented. Not necessarily educated, but talented. And we'll develop those. And, and when I say this, um, we've, I've done this before. I've been in this business for 40 years. Do you see the potential over years. there? Uh, obviously. And, and but do you see the potential over there? Absolutely. Do you see people, do, so, do you see doers there? Absolutely. And, you know, we already, I mean, we're at about 120 by January, February next year, we'll be at 1,200 people employed. Terrific. By the time we get to 2026, we'll have 6,000. And by the time we peak production, we'll be employed 10,000 people. And, and then we'll settle down at about 5,500. So some of those uh, skills we will import because they're temporary. Right. They're doing specific jobs. But the ones that are long lasting, the people that we want to operate this. So my ambition is when we turn that switch on in 2028, it's Baluchistan w operators that are operating the mine. That's and the objective. That is exactly what we're looking at as yeah. well. Thank you very much, Mark, for joining me in the program. It was a pleasure having you. So, yeah,